WKAR presents Quiz Busters. Production of Quiz Busters is made possible in part by Consumers Energy, building Michigan's future by supporting excellence in education. Consumers Energy counts on us. And by viewers like you. Today, the Orioles of Quincy take on the Aggies of Dansville. Now, here's the host of Quiz Busters, Matt Ottinger. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Dan. Welcome to Quiz Busters. Game 12 of our 18th season on the, on the air. We're glad to have you with us. Glad to have these two teams ready to play. We've been uh, chatting and joking beforehand and expect to have a really good contest between these two squads. Let's meet them beginning with the Orioles from Quincy High School. That team is Isaac Basie White, Rob Miller, the captain is Sam Haverhill, and Josh Ditton on the end. Their alternates are Megan Owens and Cody Gruner, and their advisor is Brandon Siever. They'll play the Aggies from Dansville High School, and that team is Eric Cullum, Brian Weber, Kendall Law is the captain, and Nathan Brown. Their alternates are Aaron Minshall and Nick Shalhanek, and their advisor is Deanne Charlebois. We'll meet the teams at halftime and get to know them a little bit, but right now we're going to play our game. We begin with the quick 10. 10 toss-up questions to put the first points on the board. Glad to have all of you with us. Best of luck to you. Just relax and have fun with this. Uh, the quick 10 begins. Let's get going with question one. Which future president defeated the British at the Battle of Thames and a small Indian force in Indiana at the 1811 Battle of Tippecanoe? Dansville Kendall. George Washington. It's not George Washington. No, Quincy, anybody? Uh, Sam? Andrew Jackson? No, a little bit later, uh, William Henry Harrison. Tippecanoe and Tyler II was the rallying cry when, they, when, when he was up for election. Question two. What country is currently led by a former governor of the Santa Cruz province in Patagonia? A Peronist named Nestor Kirchner. Patagonia and Peron are clues to Argentina. Question three. Which monstrous offspring of Pasiphae was slain by a magical sword given by Ariadne to Theseus before Quincy Sam? Medusa? No, it's not Medusa. I'll clear that down for Brian. The Minotaur. The Minotaur is the one that Theseus slew in the labyrinth was the rest of that. Question four. The battles of Hexham, Towton, and St. Albans were fought in what conflict that ended in 1485 when Richard III was killed at Bosworth Field. Dansville Kendall. The Hundred Years' War. Not the Hundred Years' War. Quincy, anybody? Close on that. Those are hard to keep track of. The Wars of the Roses was the answer I wanted. Question five. The lead chamber process was once used to make what strong diproctic acid used in car batteries that has Quincy Sam. Sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is right, and Quincy's on the board. We're tied at 10. Question 6. In what state would one find Sassafras Mountain, Cowpens National Battlefield, Myrtle Beach, for Quincy Robb? Virginia. It's not Virginia. Danville Nathan. South Carolina. South Carolina is where Myrtle Beach is found, Fort Sumter and the harbor of Charleston. Question 7. Which Frenchman created numerous paintings of haystacks as well as Impression Sunrise? the work that gave rise to the name Impressionism. Uh, Quincy Robb. Van Gogh. It's not Van Gogh. Dansel, anybody? No? <coughs> Monet. Monet, the answer. Claude Monet. Question eight. Which novel about a failed romance between Lady Brett Ashley and the impotent Jake Barnes was set in Paris and Pamploma and written by Ernest Hemingway? Dansville Nathan. The sun also rises. That's the one. Good job. Ten points there. Question nine. Andy Pettit, Roy Oswalt, and Roger Clemens all pitch for which Texas-based team that lost the 2005 World Series? <whistles> Quincy Sam. Astros. The Houston Astros. That's right. Question ten. The Latin word for millstone gave rise to the name of what group of 12 four-cusped rearmost teeth in the human mouth? Uh, Dansville Bryant. Molars. Molars grind the food. That's right. That's 10. <laughs> Slow start in the early going of that, but we ended up with 6 out of 10. Not bad at all. We're playing the regular game now, leading to a bonus question. Is this toss-up for all of you? 
Most of those in Latin end in a thematic vowel followed by R-E. Those in German usually end with E-N, while those of Spanish usually end in A-R. Quincy, Sam. Verbs? Uh, more specific, please. Infinitive That's verbs? what I wanted to hear, infinitive verbs. Ten points there, and Quincy's got the bonus category. We're going to hit you with some sports and see how you do with this. Listen carefully. In which cities do these sports teams of the past currently play the current home cities of each of these teams who no longer play in the place I'm going to give you. First, the Charlotte Hornets. <laughs> I need your answer. The New Orleans Hornets? The New Orleans, I just need the city. New Orleans is right for 10 points. Next, the Houston Oilers. I need your answer. Sacramento? No, they moved from Houston. They're no longer called the Oilers to Nashville, the, NBA, the NFL franchise. Uh, the, that you, you were hung up on that last part of it, and they changed the names in some of the cases. But you got 10 for the first one. You tied the game at 40. We'll break the tie with this toss-up question. In some stories, he is the Earl of Loxley. He appeared in Quincy Rob. And Hood. Right. Well done on a very early buzz in. And Quincy, you've got control. Bonus category once again. It's first five terms are one, one, two, three, five. Wait, I then tell Sam. It's okay, tell Sam. I got some more to read. Subsequent terms are found by adding the two previous ones. Identify this sequence named for an Italian mathematician. To the notch. There you go. The ratios of consecutive terms from that sequence converge to what irrational number that is said to embody aesthetically pleasing proportions? I'm not going to It's... It's like phi, it's P-H-I. P-H-I is exactly right, and I would have taken things like golden ratio, golden number, but P-H-I is exactly it. Very well done. For 20, any two consecutive terms in the series possess what property of having no common factor other than one? Prime. Um, prime numbers. More specific, please. Very prime numbers. <laughs> <laughs> they are relatively prime or they're co-prime. That's what I needed there. But you got 20 on a tough category. That was well done. 70 points, 30 point lead. We're just getting started. We got a pop quiz to play. One-on-one -on -one action. Each of you answering questions. All the answers start with the letters T-A-B. T-A-B. Isaac, now we want to see that your fingers on that buzzer here. Eric from Dansville, you'll try to do the same. Here's your three questions. Isaac and Eric. A cat with brownish-gray fur marked with dark, wavy... Isaac. A tabby cat. A tabby cat. Or any female cat was the rest of that. Next. The prohibition of certain words... Isaac. Taboo. Taboo is right, uh, on, on moral grounds. Finally. A state in southeast Mexico, or a brand name for a pungent condiment sauce made from hot peppers. Eric. Tabas Tabasco. Tabasco sauce is exactly right. Rob, Quincy, now Brian, and Dansville. A piece of furniture consisting of a flat, slab-like top supported by legs. Rob? Table. A table. Don't overthink these. That's exactly right. Next. To compute and lay out data in rows and columns. You know the word. To tabulate. Final question. A medicinal dosage in solid, Rob? Tablet. A tablet in solid form, that's right. Sam now from Quincy, Kendall from Dansville. A kitchen utensil used in serving food and as a standard measuring unit in recipes. Sam? Tablespoon. A tablespoon, that's right. Next. A salad of Lebanese origin consisting of cracked wheat, tomatoes, parsley, onions, lemon juice, and olive oil. Quite common in a Middle Eastern restaurant. Tabuli is what that's called. Captain's final question. To postpone a decision of a committee indefinitely. <whistles> Sam. To table. You table the motion. That's exactly what you do. Josh now. Quincy. Nathan. Dansville. A large house of worship, such as the... <whistles> Josh. I was going to say temple, but that's no, not No, that's not going to work on the letters. Yeah. Nathan, I'll finish it for you. A large house of worship such as the famous one in Salt Lake City, used by the Mormons. And if I'd given you choir, it might have helped. The Mormon tabernacle choir. Tabernacle, the word I wanted. 
second one for Josh and Nathan. The two-word name for the indoor game played on a usually green surface with... Nathan? Table tennis. Table tennis is the T-A-B, ping pong. And finally, a newspaper whose pages are usually half the size of a standard one, especially a newspaper this size, which concentrates on sensational or lurid news and is heavily illustrated. Josh? Tabloid. A tabloid. That's right. That's good for 10 points, and that's our quiz. right as they say we see them okay thank you very much i saw a little punching going on a little bit after the fact but everything's right just there 140 to 60 playing for control of the audio bonus question we've got a new toss-up for everybody well done on that pop quiz since 1999 this company has purchased the singing fish search engine MapQuest, and x drive dansville eric google no i'm sorry that's wrong quincy i'll finish it for you do not confer uh, Singing Fish, MapQuest, and X-Drive. In August 2006, it announced that it would lay off 5,000 employees and begin offering free email. Name this, Isaac? Yahoo. No, it's AOL. The uh, internet-focused subsidiary of Time Warner was the rest of that. America Online. New toss-up players. This author's characters include Jim Smiley and Daniel Webster, a celebrated jumping frog, as Danville Bryan. Mark Twain. Mark Twain. That's exactly right. Several people figured that out on the celebrated jumping fro frog line. Perhaps that was a little too early in the question. But that's exactly what we're going for. Dansville, you've got the bonus category. It is the audio category. Kendall, you'll give me answers for your team. After you hear the audio clue, I'll have the questions. So let's all listen to the audio clue first. The first duty of a government is to be true to itself. This does not mean perfection. It means a plan to strive for perfection. It means loyalty to ideals. The ideals of America were set out in the Declaration of Independence and adopted in the Constitution. That was from a 1920 campaign speech by a candidate who, as president, became known for being a man of very few words. Name him. Uh, Calvin Coolidge. That's exactly right. In the 1920 campaign, Coolidge became the vice presidential candidate. Who was the Republican candidate who won the candidate who won the presidency in 1920? Teddy Roosevelt. Not Roosevelt. No, that was back a few more years. Harding was the president. Coolidge succeeded Harding. But you got two. You got ten for recognizing Coolidge. We have a new toss-up for all players. A 60-point game. Though elected to the House as a Whig, this man was elected president as a Republican. Quincy Sam. Lincoln. That's exactly right. Very good. Quick buzzers by all of our players. Quincy's got this one. In what present-day state were these early colonial settlements located? The present-day state from you first is Jamestown. You You're getting good at this, but you still got to tell Sam. That's okay. It's Virginia. It is Virginia. That's right for 10. Next, Roanoke. South Carolina? No, you're close, though. It's the other one. It's North Carolina. Real, real close geographically on that one. You got 10 for that one. You got 160. Doubled up on Danceville in the first half. But a lot of stuff can happen in the second half. 50 points turn on every toss-up question. We've got a pop quiz to play in the lightning round still to come. So still, anybody's contest. Right now, Quincy with the 80-point lead. It's time to meet our players and find out a little bit about each of them. We'll start over here with the team from Quincy High School. And Isaac will put you on the hot seat. Welcome to the show. Tell us about yourself. Yeah, I'm Isaac Basie white I'm a sophomore at Quincy High School. I'm involved in track, cross-country, and quiz bowl. And I'm planning to go to U of M to study oncology. Excellent. Isaac, glad to have you with us. Let's meet your teammates now, starting with Rob. Hi, I'm Rob Miller. I go to Quincy High School. I like participating in cross-country, track, and hanging out with my friend Megan Owens, who's in the uh, alternate. Okay, very good. That's right. We, we mentioned Megan at the start of the show. Thank you, Rob. The captain is Sam. Uh, my name is Sam Haverhill. I go, I'm a junior at Quincy High School. I enjoy being in Quiz Bowl, Youth in Government, and track. And I want to go anywhere that will give me money to study physics. There you go. Well, good luck in that, Sam. And finally, let's meet Josh. I'm Josh Ditton. I'm a junior at Quincy High School. I'm involved in Quiz Bowl, Youth and Government, Trek, and I want to give a shout out to our Lady Orioles basketball team tonight. They're playing a tough game. All right. Good luck to them. Josh, thank you very much. Those are your Orioles from Quincy. You noticed, I'm sure, as I did, all four of them also in track and, and cross-country together. Uh, okay, Aggies now. Dansville. Eric, welcome. 
Hi, I'm Eric Cullum. I go to Dansville High School, and I'm on TV. <laughs> you know, that's the way I feel every time, Eric. Thank you very much. Your teammates, Brian, welcome. Hi, I'm Brian Weber. I am a junior at Dansville High School, and I hope to study to become an English teacher. Very good. Good luck to you, Brian. Your captain is Kendall. Hi, I'm Kendall Law. I'm a junior at Dansville High School, and I plan to study bioengineering. Okay, Kendall, thank you for being with us. And finally, let's meet Nathan. I'm Nathan Brown. I'm a senior at Dansville High School, and I'm planning to attend Saginaw Valley to major in elementary education. All right, Nathan, good luck to you, and those are your Aggies. Everybody's doing just great. We're going to play our second half right now. A pop quiz waiting for our players at the end, at the middle, excuse me. That's when the pop quiz comes. Lightning round at the end of the game. That's what we'll do. If the scores stay close, that'll determine our winner. You're playing for control of the video bonus category. Players, good luck to all of you. And let's get started with this toss-up. These parts of a plant's perianth lie just above the calyx of sepals and form the corolla. Quincy Sam. Petals. Petals is exactly right. Very good. I was going to get around to he loves me, he loves me not with the daisies. You didn't, fortunately, uh, you saved us from that, Sam. Let's get the video question set up for you. You're going to see the first question come up on the monitor. Answer that one correctly. I'll have more in the category for you. Susie Elkins, our wonderful producer, has the question for you coming from the Impression 5 Science Center. Pay attention. Another word for your baby teeth is also a word that describes trees that lose their foliage each year. What is that word? Perennial? Not perennial. No, it's deciduous. Deciduous are the ones that lose their leaves. Yeah. Tough break there. Went the wrong way with it. 170 total still. No points on the bonus. Thank you, Susie. And we have a new toss-up for everybody. Everybody's back in for this. Its mountains include Mount Erebus, E-R-E-B-U-S, the site of a 1979 Air New Zealand crash that killed 257 people. A namesake 1959 treaty effectively froze the claims of seven nations to parts of it. Vinson Massif is the highest point of what southernmost continent? Dansville Kendall. Uh, Europe. No, I'm sorry, that's a wrong answer, Quincy Robb. Antarctica. Antarctica is the one at the bottom. That's exactly right. And Quincy, back in control you are. Bonus category for you. Name these Charles Dickens novels. The novel, please, first. Jacob Marley is the first of the four ghosts that reform this short novel's miserly protagonist, Ebenezer Scrooge. A uh, Christmas Carol? That's right. Dickens was only married once, but his alter ego in this autobiographical novel weds both Dora Spenlow and Agnes Wickfield. <laughs> Oliver Twist? <laughs> Not Oliver Twist. No, the personal history of David Copperfield is what I wanted that time, but you got ten for the first one. And we have a new toss-up, everybody. Everybody's back in. In one of this man's novels, Gertrude Coppard marries a minor named Walter Morrill. In another, Sir Clifford is married to Constance, though she loves a gamekeeper named Mellors. Name this author of Sons and Lovers and Lady Chatterley's Lover. That's a tough one. D.H. Lawrence is his name. No points on that one. We're going to play our second pop quiz. One-on-one -on -one action once again, players. This time I'm going to give you three letters. They are S. L-A. All correct answers begin with S-L-A. Isaac from Quincy, Eric from Dansville start things off for us. The part of a rope, sail, or kite string that hangs loose without strain upon it. Isaac? Slack. That's the slack. That's exactly right. Next. To spread or apply something very thickly. Isaac? Slather. You slather. That's right. Finally. Thinly sliced cabbage as a salad especially when moistened with a mayonnaise dressing. Would have helped if I'd spotted you the coal, but by itself it's just slaw, S-L-A-W. Rob from Quincy, now Brian from Densville. To veer or angle away from a given... Le Rob? Slant. Slant is right, very good. Next, fast, boisterous, farcical comedy dominated by... Rob? Slapstick. Dominated by physical humor. That's exactly right. Finally, pants or trousers? Rob. Black. Well done. Very quick on that buzzer. Good job. Uh, Sam from Quincy, now Kendall from Dansville, our captains. A downhill race in which skiers zigzag between... Kendall. Slalom. Slalom is the SLA, zigzagging skiers. That's right. Next, 
The satirical 1969 novel featuring the character Billy Pilgrim and written by Kurt Vonnegut. Science fiction classic is Slaughterhouse Five. Final question. A dense, fine-grained, metamorphic rock prepared... Sam. Slate. Prepared for use in construction. That's exactly right. Josh now, Quincy, Nathan, Dansville. A list of candidates for nomination or election, especially a list of members of the same party or faction running as a group. Nathan? Slate. It is also a slate. That's exactly right. Same word twice. We didn't trip you up. Nathan, good job. Next. To make false charges or misrepresentations which defame and damage another person's... Nathan? Slander. Another person's reputation. That's right. Final question. The forceful execution of a basketball shot from above the rim. Oh, we got you. Maybe the, maybe the, uh, the definition was a little tricky for you. Slam. A slam dunk is what I wanted. That's our pop quiz. Your teammates, I think all six of them were wishing it was their turn on that one. I think they all had it but you two. But that's the way it works out sometimes. The pressure, the pressure gets tough. Next time we hear the fanfare, we're going to the lightning round. A few more toss-ups until then, players. Good luck with this one. During this historical period, Zheng He, that's Z-H-E-N-G-H-E, -E, Zheng He, led seven expeditions to the Indian Ocean and Southeast Asia. Its rulers included the Yongle Emperor, the Shongzun Emperor, and its founder, the Hongwu Emperor. Name this Chinese dynasty between... Quincy Rob. Ming Dynasty. Ming Dynasty is right. Between the Wan and the Qing, or the Manchu Dynasty. Quincy, bonus category for you. Name these possible candidates for the 2008 Democratic presidential nomination. First, the bulk of the attention has surrounded this former first lady, a junior senator from New York. Hillary Clinton. That's right. Next, many hope this Tennessean's recent movie, An Inconvenient Tooth, Truth, excuse me, An Inconvenient Truth, heralds a presidential run. Al Gore. Al Gore is right. Al Gore Jr. for those of us in Tennessee. But finally, supporters of this former governor of Virginia believe he would have the same broad appeal to Southern moderates as Bill Clinton did. I don't know Virginia. Howard Dean? No, I'm sorry. He's up in the, in the, uh, in, in the Northeast. North, yeah, Northeast. Mark Warner is the answer there for that one. 20 points on your bonus. 280 your total. We have a new toss-up, players. One character in this film lacks the ambition to capitalize on his perfect genome and sells his identity to a faith child astronaut. That character's middle name, Eugene, has the same Greek root as eugenics. Name this 1997 film whose title suggests a DNA sequence. It was called Gattaca, G-A-T-T-A-C-A, -T -T -A -A, new toss-up players. The scattering of these particles is used to study condensed matter because they interact with the nucleus, but are... Dansville Nathan. Photon. Say it. I'm sorry, that's a wrong answer. I'll clear that, Rob. Electrons? No, they're neutrons. You're, we're all, we were all over it there. Tough break there. Nobody scores on that one. We have the lightning round to play. No, nothing but toss-up questions remain for our players. Ten points when the players are right. They're going to lose 10 points when they're wrong. Taking a quick look at our st scoreboard, you see Quincy with a big lead. But everybody wants to play every question they can in the lightning round and get those points. Quincy, of course, trying to get a seed. Danzel wants to show off their last 60 seconds of chances here. Let's see how we do. 60 seconds on the clock, 10 points up, 10 points down when they're wrong. Remember that, players? The lightning round begins now. What stringed instrument has a name that means soft in Italian? Sam. Piano. Right. Coaxial tomography is better known by its acronym as what type of scan? Kendall. Cat scan. Right. What color tape would you associate with a complicated bureaucracy? Sam. Red tape. Right. Who was President of the United States from 1797 to 1801? Kendall. George Washington. Wrong. Australia is a continent. What's the world's largest island? Sam. Greenland. Right. Name the Russian goldsmith and artist best known for his richly imaginative jeweled East... Rob. Day. Right. What key is in the upper left corner of most computer keyboards? Sam. Escape. Right. What compass direction is associated with someone who throws with the left hand? Kendall. South. Right. A Google is a one followed by how many zeros? 
Sam. 100. Right. What famous speech ends with the phrase, shall not perish from the earth? Ah, time is up. That's our game. Quincy 340, well done. What famous speech begins with the phrase four score and seven? Oh, that would have been easier, wouldn't it? It's the Gettysburg Address. That was the last phrase from the Gettysburg Address. Kendall, you were very close. 1797-1801 was our second president, John Adams, on that one. Everything else they got right, including some very tough ones. Fabergé, and if you're not looking at a computer keyboard, sometimes it's hard to remember where that thing is way up in the upper, upper left-hand corner. Well, congratulations to both teams. That was fun. Dansville, the score does not reflect how well you did. They were so quick on that buzzer, they didn't give you a chance on the bonuses. You played the pop quiz as well. You got a lot of right answers in the game. We thank you for playing. Best of luck in your future tournaments. You did really well with us. Quincy, of course, you won today's game. Congratulations for that. That 340 points goes into the mix. We'll seed you based on your first round score. We won't see you for a few months yet, but we'll have you back here in the second half of our season. Congratulations to the Orioles, our winners today.